Hi everyone and welcome back. We have been spending some really good time talking about testing and testing your hormones is really important and a lot of people don't realize that they can actually purchase bioidentical hormones over the counter without testing. Do I think that's a good idea? I really don't. And any anti-aging doctor is gonna tell you the same thing. How are you gonna know what dose is best for you if you don't test, right? So I've been spending some good time talking about testing, and today is very important because it pertains to every single one of you. We're gonna talk about when to test your hormones, what time of the month, and a few little uh, special considerations as well. So heads up, this pertains to you no matter who you are. Okay, so we're gonna talk about when to test your hormones if you have a regular cycle. That's easy, actually. When to test your hormones if you don't have an ir a regular cycle. And when to test your hormones if you don't have a cycle at all, if you've stopped your periods. And we're also gonna talk about what time of the day to test your hormones. Okay, so let's start with an easy one when to test your hormones if you have a regular cycle. So a regular cycle is anywhere from say 28 to 32 days. And what you wanna do is test it on day 19, 20th, 21st, or 22nd. Any one of those four days and you'll get very accurate results. The goal is that you want to test about one week before you actually start your period. And I'm going to show you an example of that right now. Okay, so let's pretend that the first day of the month, not the first day of your period, but the first day of the month is up there, over there. I've got the whole calendar written out, 1 through 31. And let's say you start your period on the third of the month. That's day one of your period. So a lot of us know that. So that's day one of your period. Now, you want, if you're regular, regular cycles, 28 to 32 days, you want to te test your hormones on day 19 or 20th or 21st or 22nd. So that's what I've got here. And then you're going to start your period if you're a 28-day cycle, right there on the 31st, which is one week after you test your hormones. That's the best way to get the most accurate results. I wanna show you why that's so important because once you know why that's important, then you'll be able to tweak it and do what you need to do depending on any time of the month. So. Take a look at this. This is our cycle. And this is what's happening during the month to your estrogen levels, your progesterone levels, and the lining of the uterus, assuming you're still having periods. Because if you're not having periods, it's super easy. But okay, let's go to day one. This pink stuff is to represent the lining of your uterus. And as you see on day one, that's the day you start your period, the lining is still thick because the lining was built there to get ready for that egg going down the pike to get implanted in the uterus, right? Just in case it got fertilized. Well, you start your period, you shed the lining of your uterus, and so the lining gets thin. Then, as around day 14, you release an egg and your lining is nice and thick again and it stays thick until day 28 when you start your period again. Now let's look at what happens to your hormones. The blue is your estrogen level. So as you see, the estrogen goes up to prepare that uterus to build that lining. That's what the estrogen is doing and saying. And the progesterone stays up after the egg is released, and then they both are low at the time of your period. Now, if we look at when you want to test your 
your hormones, we want it about a week before you start your period. So that is somewhere around here, day 19, 20, 21, 22. Look what we've got. We've got the high area of your progesterone. Okay, that's what we want to know because the estrogen has reached its peak when you ovulate and then it starts to decline. But the area that we want to test our hormones is really more of our peak of our progesterone. Okay, that's going to help you in just a minute when we talk about an irregular period. So regular cycles, very easy. Right here, days 19, 20, 21, or 22. It gives you a little bit of flexibility there. So, you know, maybe you could do it on the weekend when it's a little easier. Okay, well, here's another one that's easy. What if you don't have any period at all? You're either past menopause, in menopause, or, or past menopause, no longer having any periods. Well, don't worry about it. You just test right now. You, no reason to wait. What about if you have very long cycles, like this poor gal here, <laughs> she was waiting too long. So if your cycles are really long, and I'm talking about past six weeks, eight weeks, three months, and you find that you're having periods further and further apart, don't wait, just test your hormones. Okay, let's talk about if your cycle is longer than every six weeks, what's the best way to go about making sure that you get that higher level of progesterone tested? What you would want to do is just simply wait a month after you start your period and then test your hormones. So if it's six weeks, then we know that you're gonna be past that middle of the road if you wait a month. So this is the best way to do it if you have six-week cycles. And a lot of women do have six-week cycles, especially as they get closer to menopause. All right. <laughs> Something really can drive you crazy, and that is a cycle that has no rhyme or reason. It's just totally mixed up. You could have a period that comes once a month and then all of a sudden waits two, three, four months, right? Or then all of a sudden you end up with two periods in one month. That can really drive you crazy. So what do you do in those situations if your cycle is really irregular like that? Well, before you admit yourself to the loony bin, just treat your cycles as regular. After you have a period, do your testing on day 19, 20, 21, or 22, and just be done with it. Because when your cycles are irregular like this, you just get yourself through the, the period, your first, your period, your next period, get yourself through your next period, and then on day 19, 20, 21, or 22, check your hormones. Because when your cycles are like this, up and down and all over the place, you're usually not ovulating. So it doesn't matter. Okay, now this can really drive you crazy. There's nothing worse than having two periods in one month. And well, that's a cycle that is shorter than 28 days. So if that's the case, remember the goal. We want to get you past the mid-cycle of your, of your month, okay? So let's say it's 21 days, and we want to get you past that mid-cycle and test the second half of the month. So if it's less than 28 days, and let's say you only have a 21-day cycle, then you're going to need to test three to five days before you would expect to have a period. So instead of a, a week, seven days, you would just wait three to five days. And that will make sure that you're at that higher level of progesterone. So here it is again, if you're having a period every 21 days, then this whole graph is gonna shift over to the left and just wait three to five days and you'll get your high level of progesterone, the highest that it is. 
All right, so we did it. That's all there is to it. It's super, super easy as long as you've just got some general guidelines. And these videos are here for you to go back to and look at anytime you want. Okay, so what time of day should you test? Now that you know what day you should test, what time of day should you test? Super easy. You test first thing in the morning within 30 minutes of waking. That's very important. And if it takes you longer than 30 minutes to collect your saliva or to do your blood spot, that's okay as long as you start within 30 minutes of waking up. So there's a couple other special considerations we want to do, a little check off list. So whether you do saliva or blood spot, you want to make sure you're ready the night before. So wash your uh, um, sheets and wash your towels, put out clean towels so you are um, ready to go first thing in the morning and you're not having to spend time doing that. Wash your hands really well when you first get up. Make sure the night before you clean the faucet and the sink and all of that is clean so nothing gets contaminated. And this is for both saliva and blood spot. Now, if you're doing saliva, you're gonna rinse your mouth out for about five minutes with just plain water and spit it out. Don't drink it, just spit it out. Don't brush your teeth, just rinse your mouth out. Don't eat, don't drink, don't smoke, don't even drink water. And this is for saliva testing. And to be extra careful, when you collect your saliva in your little tubes, use gloves because you won't touch the edge of the little saliva collecting tube. Now, what about some special considerations of blood spot? Well, it's not so bad, not as many rules with blood spot. You, it's less restrictive. You can drink water if you want. Uh, still do it within 30 minutes and remember to wash your hands and do everything that you would do otherwise because you're gonna be using blood spot with your hands, so you definitely want your hands to be clean. So I have a video of me doing my blood spot and saliva on the website. So you can see step-by-step step how to do it right on the website. And you can see me, I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> and it's my real testing. Okay, so previously we talked about timing of when to do your testing if you were on a pharmaceutical hormone supplement. That is a pharmaceutical hormone supplement that had progestins in it. Now remember, progestin is simply the substitute, the chemical substitute for bioidentical progesterone. That's what we, I really want to get you off of. That's what I want you to stay away from. So we already talked about that. What's coming up next though is when, what considerations and when you use your bioidentical hormones before your test. So if you are currently using bioidentical hormones, there's a certain length of time that is critical that you need to use it before the next morning when you're doing your testing. If you use your hormones uh, too soon, or, or for instance, if you're taking your testing at 7 a.m., you gotta make sure that you use your bioidentical hormones within the right time frame so you get the right testing results. So this is what we're going to be talking about next time. So it's really important. See you there. And if you like this video, let me know. Okay. Give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Super important stuff here. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks so much.